Secret number five of the Yang style pushing hands will focus on the parallel between the movement of the form as you do it. It's going to actually give a rationale for why to move a certain way. And the ability to issue power. When I introduce what I believe to be close to the original, I think this is the only way it was done, actually, because um, they were no-nonsense people, and why would they uh, want to develop a, a casual way of, of doing their practice when they were fighters? It was a martial art. So we have people from all over the world. This is crazy. Uh, and, and it's going to continue because we're going to grow this so that we, each one of us at a point of light. I'm pretty sure that as you get this method, it's going to fundamentally change the way you orient to your practice. And this is with all due respect to your, uh, what you've been doing up to this point. You know, over the episodes, trying to be pretty explicit in saying that it's rare. I, I think I, I had a rare experience. I, I couldn't just let this go and, and not address it in my life because it was so impactful. And uh, as, as you'll learn in episode 10, uh, there's a plan that's drawn out because it's not a straightforward deal. What's not straightforward about it is that there are layers of the, the training. And I think we're all in agreement um, that there probably was. In order to, to get the layers out, uh, there's going to be a, a bit of a strategy needed, which I'll explain in full in episode 10. But that's why I've had to wait. Secondly, we had to establish the pushing hands in the application. We had to establish a, um, uh, a, a curriculum, a, a, a pathway for you to come in. And that's wrought with difficulties because if you take your ordinary Tai Chi course and you just do something, do this, do that, uh, it, it's not going to pierce. It's not going to penetrate patterns that you already have because we love to do. And so if you're doing on top of a doing and then someone says, no, do this or do that, then it, it's, it's, it's not going to have much benefit. So maybe as a psychologist or, or what skills that I bring in, that would be secret number three, which is to cut the ties that bind, a way of working with your body that I learned from the other research so that you can get into your body. It's really a, a personal um, exercise that you do lying down and so that you can get in your body and get in touch with your qua, get in touch with your hips, get in touch with your current habitual way of moving so that you can be receptive to issuing force, issuing force. That secret number three, I'm just trying to promote it right now while I have your audience, is so critical because, and it'll, it'll be maybe a little bit of a different type of journey that you're used to in training, but we're going to go into your life in two ways. One is we're going to review uh, the Chinese habit. We're going to review what you learned from your teacher so that you can go and you can really be present with the teachers you've had, the training you've had, and how you root and put out your power. Because if you, you, you need to establish that baseline of how you root and how you put power and distinguish it from this imagination we have of Yang Shoujong or the original Yang family. Okay. And again, it is not to take anything away from what you have, but already, but it's to acknowledge the fact that I think we all agree that the young secrets are still secret at this point. All the legends, our goal is to close that gap. And I believe that with intelligent approach, we can do it. We, we can start to get there so that you can feel it and say, you know what? I'm onto something. But the most difficult thing, the secret number three, 
most difficult thing, it's called unwinding, is to unwind by saying, oh, that, you know, I talk about Jin Sun all the time, and uh, he was spectacular, of course, but then there were limits. And so I, I needed to get in touch with uh, what I acquired from him ha habit-wise, you know, in those thousand pushes that I did with him and to recognize how what he sort of programmed in me, in my, my habit body to push it is fundamentally different from what the young family themselves <clears throat> did. And, and I got such clarity on that because I knew the young family uh, to that level. So I, I've needed to let go of that. I, I needed to cut the ties that are binding me to Jin Sun's particular way of doing, while keeping the good things, of course, because he was spectacular as well. So in order to do that, you can't use your mind. You can't just add doing onto your current doing. You need to uh, have, create a platform for yourself in this method that I, that I recovered from the Imperial Palace for the Tai Chi platform and get in touch with your body at the very deep relaxation and yet uh, connecting level. In that workshop, we're going to do viewing and sharing um, the habits that we've acquired. And then the method where you go off and you, you're, you have to work on your own and uh, let go of in, at the level of your hips, your qua. There's a habit that we all have. And we need to let go of that so that we can empty ourselves and be open to the method. Let's go and continue to share where you came from as much as you, you wish, just so that we can sort of all connect up. Maybe Gunnar, if you don't mind. Yeah, yes. Well, I'm a student and a teacher in the organization of Chu King Hung, the third disciple of Yang Sao Chung. And uh, now over 20 years now. And um, but it seems to be that uh, his kind of Tai Chi, uh, can I say, is a little bit uh, far away over the years from the original source. And so I'm interested well, to get some additional insights um, yeah, just to improve whatever. Let it be the partner exercises. Let it be the solo form practice, uh, whatever. Great. Thanks, Gunnar. Uh, Samuel? Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Samuel. No? So I've been practicing uh, Tai Chi since I think 20, uh, my early 20s. No? So I'm more of a Wu style than a Yang style. But what I heard from my teacher, Master O Kin Hua, no, of the Wu style, there is no such thing as a uh, Wu. There is no such thing as a uh, Yang, but just yang, Tai Chi. They just use the word Tai Chi. So, uh, so far, my teacher... Uh, From the young style, uh, he went to Hong Kong and studied with the uh, young Shou Chong for one month. <laughs> so uh, huh? that's all I can say. <laughs> and I also attended uh, Rene Navarro. Have you heard of the Rene Navarro? Yes. yes, yes. Yes, yeah. I attended because he's also a Filipino. So I've attended oh. maybe three, thrice or four times of uh, Rene's uh, seminar in Tai Chi. So that's mm. it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yo. And um, my main teacher was Sanji Tom, and he studied with Master Chu Ping Hun um, from the early 80s. Uh, about a couple of decades, he was a very close uh, student of uh, Chu, Master Chu. And um, he also studied for a couple of decades with Dong Zhen Chen. So he had two very different angles of the young. Uh, family uh, transmissions. But from Chu King Hoon, he got a very, very close and very in depth training. And um, especially early, early training? Early, early uh, 80s, he trained with okay. Chu. Okay. And from that day, Chu, Master Chu was much more open to, um, to review things, so to speak, as uh, what I've heard nowadays. And um, Uh, my teacher was very close with him for, for a long time. Oh, gosh. I mean, with um, Sanjitam from 1985. So I've done a lot of different uh, ways to 
of Tai Chi because um, the original form, what he taught from Master Chu, was so complex and difficult for most people wow. that he changed his, the whole school. The school is named <coughs> the Gold Flower School. The Gold Flower Tai Chi School now has its own form and, and systems that is much more approachable for uh, most people. But at some point, we, we want to uh, also develop in what we call the small circle system, what we uh, uh, learned from uh, Master Chu. So, um, so, yeah. so um, this is the, uh, what I've heard like from Gunnar is, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Gunnar, but um, okay. is, is, is what Chu King Hung did later, his, and then, Job, you're saying that what you learned was what Chu Hing Hong taught earlier. Yeah, yeah. Taught in the 80s and 90s, what he taught then, and because uh, Sang Tan was such a close student, also um, very much an, uh, a private student, he yeah. learned uh, many things that weren't taught to other people, oh. and. Uh, he also developed it in, uh, in the uh, last decades, actually, he developed it in different, uh, different way of teaching, actually, uh, because he, has, he had also very broad knowledge of all kinds of energy systems, from Indian yoga to Sufi to, uh, well, very much different things and integrated that. But he still, every time he still comes back to the system he was taught by Master Chu. Because it has all, it has it all, as he said. Really? But it's so difficult to learn that he built it up solely within the system of our school at the moment. Have you been following? Um, how long you've been following this dialogue in our? Because uh, I've been I've been out six months already. How long have you been following us? I think um, about three months ago I, I discovered your video. I think that the third video you you did. And uh, that triggered me, and that's why I'm interested in this uh, in this group and in, in you as a person, because there is an abundance of loads of opinions about Tai Chi, and it's very rare to find something really genuine. And I recognized in your talk, uh, your talks, uh, something genuine, and I was really triggered and was really curious uh, to find out more, because what Sangitam told me about the Yang family, I never heard it from anybody else. And a couple of things you, you spoke about was, hey, it was the first time I heard that. <laughs> really? Uh, can, can you share with us one, one of those points? Those, the, um, uh, I can remember the, uh, the first thing that I saw was you were talking about your experience with Jiang Chaoshun. And there were a couple of points that uh, the way he th thought was like um, what I heard uh, most of them uh, met, met him uh, in those days a couple of times, but also from Master Chu, he had the stories about, well, that's the way he taught it. And it's, oh. it's very, very, very difficult to, to get it if you don't have the listening for it, so to speak. Right. And, right. Uh, and also, I've, I've worked with Master Chu himself also a couple of times, and it's just amazing what what the secrets are or what the, what the power is behind the this, this system. So that's uh, always been uh, my interest. Great. Well, I'll be looking forward to your, your reaction as we go forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Finally, Rob. Going to my Tai Chi thing. I, I studied uh, two different versions of the Yong style systems and three different versions of the Wu style systems with the Yong style systems. I went to studied in the Ben Lo lineage, and um, I, I, you know, Yang uh, Ching. Yep, Yang Ching, and then uh, went to the Wu style with uh, the Ma Yu Liang lineage, and um, I mainly learned the more of the technical aspects of push hands through that. Um, I did experience. I don't have. Uh, a lot of experience with the Jin Sun Chu style of push hands, although I've met a couple of his students and uh, even um, Vincent Chu students, and I got uh, power push with them. 
and uh, the feeling was very unique and um, it's very different than what other Tai Chi systems are doing with that power push because it, oh. it feels, it feels like you are pushing against a wall, something like that. Right. Right. And the others didn't uh, give you that experience? No, the, like, for example, if I was pushing with a Wu style, you know, um, I, I've met, they were masters of playing with your balance. That's right. So when you, when you push into them, they would disappear and then they would bounce you like a basketball, you know? Right. right. I want to make a note of that fact that you've had so much experience and, and I, I would agree, you know, uh, the, the Zheng Man Ching pushing hands, which, uh, is so is so widely known, and with all your experience, that you would single out the Jin Sun power push as fundamentally different. That's very significant um, observation in my viewpoint. The best way in a focused platform like this to illustrate this uniqueness of the young, the most direct way would be because you're all experienced practitioners is to go into two hand pushing hands, shuang shou, toy shou, and the way that the Yang family did it. Does everyone have a two hand pushing hand experience? Yes. 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 Great, great. So, so this is an advanced group and it's really how we'll be able, I'll be able to illustrate, I think, some of the real salient points about how Yang Shou Jung and we're presuming the entire family did it. Let me just verbally prepare you for this. First of all, have you guys been? Have you guys watched videos of a lot of two hand young pushing hands? We probably wa each watched like a lot of them, right? Yes. A and you know the the flowing one where it just feel it feels good and it looks good, where it's really open, or or the Jiang Wanching Ben Lo where. You, you're, you're always coming back. And there's always this, just say that the youngs didn't ascribe to that because they, they were just here and it was direct and they put the energy out. So there's a directness. That's the first thing. Second thing is that their, their yielding was um, the two hands was straightforward. It was linear and direct. So when you, uh, you're in ward off here, rather than focusing on this, okay, see how I turn my shoulder? Is it their frontal? And you know how oftentimes this other hand, it, they sometimes use the, the middle of the forearm to roll, to roll back. You've seen that, right? The Yang's, just use the palm to cup. It's a cupping motion, very direct. And it's direct and front facing. And so there's a, there's a term I'd like to bring in, softness with resistance, just as Rob sort of may have experienced. You're, in terms of empty and full, you're always full with the youngs, you're able to develop this extremely dense and heavy feeling in your body. Now, softness is the hard thing to get when you practice in this linear, the, the G, the pushing on the shoulder that you can see in the Jin Sun video, uh, hit the demo online. You can see that that's linear and you can see how his student just bounces away. And so the question is, how can you take your current practice and in, begin to strategically, intelligently incorporate this, this idea? It's an idea so it'll begin with an idea and modify your way. And I think, um, I hate to say this, but you know, uh, this we're we're in a social world, and how are you going to say this to your students, Samuel? Right? Suddenly, you're going to be 
trying out uh, maybe maybe a, a little different way than you've been teaching. A again, no no discrediting to any t teacher, or, but I mean we, we've got to we've got to at some point say that I've been I've been in touch with the higher source. That is, if if it this proves to be beneficial to you. So I, I need to prepare you psychologically for this as well, because uh, you know who's going to accept you? Uh, most a lot of your teachers, a lot of you uh, are veterans. That's why I I published episode two. Episode two was about how do you deal with being different suddenly, and but I, I just we'll just leave it at that. But I need we need to psychologically prepare so that you can strategize how to talk to your the people you know or present yourself professionally that, that's why in episode 10 i'm making such a big deal out of bringing this out formally as a certification thing because you need that it's not just i met this guy online and he's taught me some things it's never going to go anywhere this has got to be a formal thing that that comes out with powerful people such as you changing the way you're practicing and with this different treatment of what you're already doing to make a change, you got to change at some point, you know, it's almost like changing political parties, which is very difficult to do these days. So it begins with how you present your power. This idea of letting go and being soft, I would say the youngs do that in the single hand. Yeah, you've got to get that waist turning and so forth. But once you go to double, suddenly the personality changes. Suddenly, when when they put their on their their push on your palm and you're going back and rolling like this, suddenly they're hitting that wall that Rob just mentioned. So we're going to do it in our chairs or sitting down right now, but understand that the, the total ability will be with your qua, your stance, you know, your number one position, how to deal with power when you waste the front. And uh, secret number four, the level, okay? Position level one being low, two and three. Uh, again, I don't recommend that you immediately go low because it depends on what shape we're in and what age we are and so forth. And I don't think you need to because of the way we're going to approach this. Use intelligence. There's, there's got to be a way for you to grab this power. You need to know how the hands look, how the hands move in order to start to get a sense for where that is. So the on, maybe we can all do that together now, the push, the palm is, the palm is caught. You go in the on here, you want the hands to be uh, almost very parallel and flat so that when you're on their, their pung, okay, it's very linear. So there's a cooperation between two people. I'm here in a linear fashion and my shoulders down but the hand is like this. So it, I'm just as strong here. You've, I'm, I feel just as strong here to you as I feel here when you have your two hands on there. When I said cupping, you know how um, there are a lot of ways of doing this, right? And, yeah. and oftentimes you're doing this, right? Could people see that, you know, and then here? Right, and then here, you know, uh, have you seen that before people? Yes. They, they put their hands here or they, they, they do other things with it. But the youngs, the youngs, this hand cups and it doesn't grab, it doesn't grab. Just use the, the cup of the palm and it turns like this, just turn it. That coordinates with the left hand rolling side, but it's not going back like this. 
uh, just follow me, Stephanie, please. Ends are flat here. And, okay, now um, the key are two things. One is the cupping like this, rather than um, pulling back. It's not pulling back, okay? Um, but it's cupping and it rolls and it coordinates with the left coming back. Now, how the left comes back is really interesting because I'm not just retreating. Follow me, please, Stephanie, follow me. Mm -hmm. It's not just this, you know, I, I'm not just retreating back because the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a soft resistance. So there's a fullness that you maintain all the way through the sequence. You push, mm -hmm. thank you. Here, so I can't come in. I can't yeah. come in because it's full, even when she's neutralized to the side. Okay, and then from there, the ward off comes up, right? It comes up like this. Here, I switch to here and I'm pushing her. In the two hand, we tend to do this. Good, Stephanie. And then we let it go, right? And then, then we roll and do another feel good sequence. The youngs did not waste their time and energy. They didn't just endlessly, endless circles. The youngs did not. Once you, once you engaged, once you engaged, it was war. They're always like this, no matter what. They're really doing it. They're taking it utterly seriously and they're not wasting their time in developing bad habits. You develop bad habits when you're used to being the big master and demonstrating, you know, with this lackey student who's got, got absolutely no, no strength. Thank you for this explanation because it's, this is very hard to, uh, to talk about with other people because most people I do pushing hands with, with always say to me, you're pushing too hard. Right. <laughs> and I want to keep that pressure, what you're talking about, because that's, that's the connection you can get. And um, by the way, one of the reasons that uh, the young family always look for the other person is because the energy is disrupting when you look the other directions. There's a, there's a disruption. It doesn't work. But, but, but that just shows how the world is doing middle class Tai Chi. Exactly. Because even the teachers don't, they forgot what they're doing it for. It's for, it's for developing this, that, 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 that ability that Yang Shodong had to project. Exactly. Okay. And one other thing, what I've noticed in your explanations, current is supposed to be expanding. Current energy is expanding. And everybody's collapsing. Right. But pushing in. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Different people, all kinds of people are asked, why are you, why are you collapsing? Because it's, well, it's, it's yielding, they say. <laughs> That's right. What you're after is making an impression on your partner where they're feeling, man, this person, first of all, is integrating their whole body. And then I want to, it doesn't matter what, which of the four positions, right? Ward off, roll back, press forward, push. Each one has its own weight. As she comes in, I'm just rolling her and keeping her frontal. See how she's not turning. Your partner is not turning the shoulder toward you. They're also staying frontal. So what happens? This is here's a key point here. What happens? And and she she's she's skilled, so she's not emptying. If she empties, see it. I just empty out here. You know what happened? No, not completely, but you know what? You neutralize and, and then they wait for the next move, right? They go, okay, that's done. Well, if that if that's what happens, then bang, go right in. And 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 you do that a couple of times and they'll be full. Believe me. You you, you come in a couple of times. Uh, uh, push, thank you. They come in a couple of times and she empties out. I just empty out. And, and I come in or, or whatever, and they're, they're going to they're gonna wise up real fast. As you push me, I'm going to give you soft resistance at every level, 
at every level here, 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 here. Two hand pushing hands is not the venue to develop that. The venue is the power pushing, is the pressing against each other. Now, project in the future. Imagine holding this in a static way with your partners or with your students. Samuel, you can grow just as much, even though you're the strongest, okay, of your, of your, uh, of your clan. You can still develop, but you don't have someone who's stronger than you. And that's the key. Because we don't have Jinsun, we don't have, and I, I hate to say this, but a lot of the disciples, they don't do it right. You know, they, they push and push and you can just see it. It's just like, I don't know, the eyes are down type of idea, you know. It's just not global in the way they do it. We don't have the benefit of going and meeting these people. And so using our intelligence, and we can do it. What do you guys think, just from doing this a little bit, what do you think of developing your structure that Job's talking about through this, and then developing the function through the two hand, pushing hands? You feel you might be able to move forward with this. With this, with this information. Uh, yes, I think um, this kind of pushing hands with a with a dry uh, position, with a G position. Um, I well, at, at least I never practiced that one. We practice just the standard pushing hands, moving backwards and forward. But one hand, one hand, training, the cupping motion and so on. Um, that's exactly the way we also learned it. Um, uh. Yeah, that's exactly uh, okay. everything. What explained was one hundred percent agreement. What about keeping this straight? Um, yes, in beginning, yes, but then, then um, we're doing the loy, the lu. Then we move backward. We shift the, back, the the weight backward, and then we rotate also the, the waist. So we shift a little bit backward. But in the very beginning, you know, when when the other the, when the partner initiates it's on his push it's exactly what you explain so uh, we have this strong left arm in the, in the exact way and then we also have this uh, right hand the cupping motion and this, this motion of the right hand sometimes not only goes sideways to the left shoulder of the partner so be or behind the left shoulder of the partner yes and that and that forces the partner the partner's uh, center of so it seems then, Patrick and Gunnar, that maybe the only thing that's missing in your training is yes. the structure. I, I never, well, this kind of pushing hands, uh, well, as far, maybe Patrick, maybe you have experienced it, but I, I never did it. Training positions quite much, also with power, but not, not this kind of uh, G pushing hands. So this one, I, I really would, would like to try out um, this kind of G pushing hands, yes. Yeah, that, that'll be a workshop, either one or two. I, I'm, I'm really tempted to, we have to get, teach you techniques to get in so you can get in touch with the, the, the habits of your, of your qua in your waist and your hips. Hmm. Uh, but that might be too psychological for you guys. I have no idea it's how you guys are. Yeah, emotionally, psychologically, you know, looking back, oh, the Chinese wore slippers all the time. And, you know, much for joining me today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. <laughs>